Radio Show with your host, Monty Clark. We stand together and accept that we now live in a world transformed by Fukushima. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on UCY.TV Radio. We relentlessly engage every ear that listens. We expose and confront the complete lack of accountability to the nuclear industry. Consider social engineering programs to view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. The Age of Vision Radio Show creates a venue that all will choose. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action and save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Our actions matter. Every voice matters. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Today is August 3rd, 2016. Uh, so thank you for joining me today. Uh, normally on Wednesdays I interview people. I did have Patty Amino lined up, and at 7.30 in the morning she called me, freaked out her uh, water heater just blew up. And as she was calling me, her technician was showing up. So uh, I decided I'm just going to go on the air by myself. I think I will call my uh, great friend Thomas Ackerman to join us. I had him on the air, and he was making noises, so I cut him off. Uh, but I would like to thank you for joining us. This is our one-year anniversary. It gives me the opportunity to reflect on everything that I've learned and really how this show has affected my life and how, frankly, disappointed I am at how much it hasn't changed one little iota of anything. Uh, before I get into that, let me give Thomas Ackerman a call here and see if we can get him to join us uh, on our show today. So we can have him come back in. So thank you for joining us. This is the interesting thing about today. Hey, Tom. Hello. Good morning. Thank you for joining me so very last minute. As I was logging into Skype, I saw Tom was on, and I'm like, hey, you want to join me on the one-year anniversary? And he's like, yeah. So thank you. Let's do it. Yes. Well, look, this is the thing. You know, uh, when Patty called me about 20 minutes ago and told me she had just had this catastrophe, uh, I actually was kind of reflecting. I always take that as a sign from the universe that things go the way they ought to. And that always makes me think about if things go the way they ought to, then are we supposed to be in the place we are? I don't think so. I don't think that what we're dealing with is man-made. You know what I spent the time doing? This was very interesting. You know, I have this proposed idea that the Zika virus is a cover-up for the uranium mining mess that is being created in Brazil. And I actually looked at the little province where the new uranium mining processing plant, 400 tons of uranium is being processed there. Wow. Uh-huh, every year now, since 2012. How long, how long has uranium been uh, mined in Brazil? Only since 2012. And now downstream where all the Zika virus cases are is down the river and we know how dirty uranium mining is. We have the microencephaly and then we have the World Health Organization deciding they're going to do a study and you know we know how that works Tom. The IAEA probably sent them down there and said hey we're seeing these microencephaly cases you better come up with a, a reason why we're going to have it instead of exclude uranium from your studies. Are you, are you telling me, Lonnie, that the world is not what it appears to be? Is that what you're saying to me? Just precisely. And you want to hear what was even worse this morning? I'm watching. I've, taken, I've resorted to watching Fox News and CNN 
so that I can see what they're saying. I already know what MSNBC is saying. <laughs> but Maybe those they want to two- shut down the Olympics. Maybe they want to, uh, you know, outside of a major there event. There was a guy on television telling us that we should all comply. Comply. Yeah. And you know what sent a chill up my mind is I... I do tax resolution. You know what I have told my clients many times? Compliance is your friend. You Uh want to be right or you want to be wrong. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I personally am not going to comply. I am part of the Dem exit. I will not comply. I am not voting for that monster. I am not. What about that uh, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, right? That kind of idea? Well, I don't say I actually accept the Bible stuff either, so I don't know about the that. The Bible is kind of a, uh, a kind of reference, I think, to uh, axioms that go around in the population, right? They're like axioms, and ax- like uh, people, it's sort of like uh, the Bible is more like a mantra, it, uh, and, and probably some very valuable uh, lessons uh, to be learned in there. If, uh, this is my take on, I don't mean to offend any Christians out there, including my family, if they happen by chance to be listening. <laughs> I think that the Bible was created by men, for men, to control women and children and subjugate most men and keep everybody into a subjugated mind slave state of like the old. I mean, the symbols in the Bible are identical to the ones from ancient Egypt when we had the priesthood that destroyed. uh, And and in fact, Carolyn Meese wrote a really excellent book called uh, Sacred Contracts, in which she compared all the major religions. They all have the same major sacraments. It seems to be intrinsic to human culture. We need to repeat these things. I'm not saying that they don't have value in the spiritual world, but the interpretation of the Bible to me is, for me, frankly, the Bible, Islam, and... Uh, Judaism are all three sides of the same coin. They have, they and have. It the builds a pyramid. Origin. If you actually look at it, it builds a pyramid. Hello. They have the, they have the same origin. Uh, they're Abrahamic. Uh, Abraham is the father of those uh, well, religions, right? You know, uh, this is an interesting thing, Tom. This is why I'm so grateful that you could join on with me because you and I came into this. Uh, I came into the radio show through the Post Ignorance Project. Right. I was talking yeah. to Jules. I wanted to promote. Kevin Blanche's show. Right before the show opened, that whole thing blew up. And ironically, this last week, for the first time, Kevin and I actually had a cordial conversation. We have not talked mm-hmm. since last year. We actually talked. And, uh, you know, I, I wish him well. I know he's sick right now. And uh, it's, I, I, it's allies, right? It's, it's about finding allies and supporting people that are on our side. And that's with, right. Right? That's, that, that's it comes right. down to that. I think this is what you're looking for. It's what I'm looking for. That's to right. find allies. We're stronger we're stronger with people that are have willing a- to tell the the facts about the nuclear industry. This is what's gone wrong here. Like this Zika virus thing, we have all these scientists. No one, we have these doctors walking through the streets of these little tiny towns where the Zika is, and they're like, "We're in a mystery. We have no idea. There's just not that much <laughs> mosquitoes. Why do we have it? It's the nuclear industry. It's the uranium mine. But you know what? You don't know what you don't know until you know you don't know it. We have no idea, Lonnie. I guess we have no idea. Safe, cheap, and clean. Jeez, I have no idea why we're having all these problems, you know. Right, that's right. And to be honest, I have somewhat ascertained, this is what I think the people in St. Louis, and the venue of my show is going to change after the first of the year. At the end of this month, I'm taking a few weeks off from like the 31st until uh, when Carl Grossman will join us on the 16th. I'm taking a few weeks off. I'm going to play some of our really great, I'm going to give Jules uh, our menu of what we want to replay on those uh, sh- slots. We have plenty of great interviews that ought to be reheard. So I'm going to... That's, that people should know, I mean, the amount of work that you've put into this uh, radio broadcast three times a week. I mean, that's a lot of time, a lot of effort considering... Your day job, uh, I mean, you stay alive by uh, making sure your clients are taken care of, and you've taken that time, which is amazing, because I, I even find making YouTubes uh, to be real. Oh, Tom, you cut off, but that's okay. <laughs> I think you're still I, there. Can, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can. I can. I'm, I'm just trying but, to... Well, thank you for that, because that's true. I do... Sp- Actually, I spent a lot more time on the St. Louis issue, trying to get up to speed, talking to people, figuring it out. And to be honest, I, I, I honestly, I, 
I have apologized to them, and I've been told I shouldn't apologize because I think I've been somewhat overly frank with them about, like, for me, I mean, I'm outraged at their situation. I cannot forget about it a single day. It doesn't go out of my mind ever, in, at all any day. Their Look situation at, is so gigantic and so grave. It is an outrage. Our government is ignoring it. But look at the irony in this, that you've mentioned this to me, that you've sort of been, uh, people are not interested in coming on your show because they, they feel you're, you're offensive in some way. Now, how, how ironic is that? What is the offense? We, we discussed this. I understand what the offense is, Tom, and this is how I'm going to change the venue. People are sick of hearing about it. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Guess what? They've hit a freaking brick wall with the fucking government. Excuse my language, but they have just like, boom, boom, boom. And and now, you know, there's a lot of, there's inviting people taking sides, saying you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you're trying to do this. And what they, and they are beginning to work back together by excluding outsiders. And I think that's probably valuable for them because they're the ones living the fucking experience. They're the ones living it. Well, why Only, would, this is my collective question. Why they would don't they, have to live it. Why don't they just en masse organize groups to go live somewhere else? That's my outsider point of view. But then again, we have these people up in Richland uh, right now where the fire is burning out of control near Hanford. It's not under control, and we're not being told. You're, I mean, you're talking about something, though. What I was trying to express was how people are not able to lock into this message, this feeling, this idea, how they're still preoccupied being on some sort of a winning team, as I call it, that people think they're on a winning team. And anyone that doesn't seem to fit into that mold of winning team, they'll just ignore or, or forget about. So your, your, uh, your situation with your program and having a hard time finding a person from St. Louis to, uh, to actually use you, use you in order to promote their uh, plight, you know, what is going on is, is irrational, is irrational. No well, sense. I think it speaks to their nihilistic, like, well, they're on the only way, like, what they want is they want getting, they want these people to, this is the sweetest part about them. This is why I can't help but be in love with the people of St. Louis, to be honest. They want accountability. They still think that our government's going to be ethical. They think if they push them hard enough, they're going to be accountable. But, you know, look at Patty Amino, 27 years fighting this fight, 27 years. That seems to be how long the government pushes it off, 27 years. Yeah. So that's an outrage. As an American, and, and actually that kind of reflects on me. I have this sense of like, oh, my God, instead of recognizing that they're all just freaking monsters. I mean, look at our, this election really reflects America right now. Really. Bernie Sanders was the guy who could have walked out of there like the Pied Piper, given them all the finger and said, try to murder me. I've just been threatened. No way. And walk out. You know what I mean? But no, he cowered. He's a coward. Americans are cowards. That's partly my anger. You know what I... You know, Lonnie, when you talk about Bernie and, and how that has evolved, it's a betrayal, obviously. But what I'm thinking is, why, why does this happen? And when I think about this is that uh, in my own situation, I need to pick a fight. Like, uh, meaning I'm convinced and so sure about something and I need to stand up, whatever that might be. I mean, people have lost that spirit to fight. Uh, people need to pick a fight, whether it's Having a uh, a garden plot. I, I don't think we need to pick a fight. I need we. I think we need to make a line in the sand and stand up for integrity. That's a fight, Lonnie. Line in the sand is a fight. That's You're not picking fight. a fight. We're saying this is it. It's not. I mean, it's their choice. Where do they want to go? And the fact is, we already know where they're going. They murdered Seth Rich. Murder. That's what they're doing. Why do you think Bernie stood down the way he did? But you and I know what they're doing. Why isn't it working? Why are people passive? Why are they complicit with all of this? And it's because they've lost the desire to fight. And I would, I would say, like I make a painting, every time I make a painting, I'm like picking a fight on myself in a sense. I'm picking a fight with me and duking it out. We got to duke it out somehow here. We got to have the courage that you always say that. Put on your courage feet for what? To hang around and okay, so then this speaks to this other issue, Tom, and this is where the this is why no matter who I interview on the radio show and the information we get out there, very few people me I'm a perfect I always told Kevin I'm like the perfect post ignorance person. 
because of my history. And, I mean, I work like a slave. I'm like this little lap dog. I mean, part of it has to do with my own ethics. I refuse to rip taxpayers off and charge them $15,000 because they owe the government $150,000. Do you know what I mean? Like, attorneys out there, people in this industry are taking horrible advantage and they're saying, well, I know how to do it and so I deserve this money. I think that that is all completely immoral. The you have moral, a conscience. You have a, I, but you this have a is the thing. What happens when you have a conscience is you have to work. A, I'm a female, so I have to work twice as hard as most men to earn the same money. B, I, even when you have a conscience, you have to still work harder at it because it means that your state, your own personal standards are higher. Yeah, conscience is not a free ticket. Conscience means you're going to have to stand up for what you actually know and believe to be true. Yes, but then that speaks to like do this is part of like what my my friends and family have been after me about the radio show because it has occupied all my time, all of it except I work, I go to sleep. I study, I go to school, I do the radio show, or I'm talking to people to do the radio show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there in order to get people on the air, I have to actually talk to them and engage in them and, you know, like, have them understand that we're, we are a real station. And there's a lot of homework, like all this stuff that I bring up, like this thing about the EPA, where I grew up, I'm like, and you know what? That health physicist, Dana, you know, has said, well, those kind of people, just ignore them. That's what Don said. Just, you know, you're not going to convince them. No, but you know what? We need a dialogue with them because he is correct. The pollution from the chemicals and the, the horrible technological dumps that they put in our environment are probably of as great importance to the human health, if not as bad. I mean, I don't think you can compare them. They're just as bad. John Goffman even said that it's not just nuclear. It's the whole shebang. It has to be stopped. And it's there. I mean, they have made a firm commitment. If anybody saw that video with that tunnel opening, remember that thing with the angel wings and that weird little baby head? Yeah, the 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 that art was an event. announcement, man. Like, who it was an you? art event? No, no, it was on. Wasn't that an art event that had like uh, uh, brilliant dancers and uh, brilliant music? Uh, the highlight, I think, was uh, Baphomet, the uh, the androgynous uh, goat right. character. Yeah, what an art event that is! It's like symbolism, art, fabulous. Hey, bring it on, bring it on. But you know, Lonnie, I would imagine that. Uh, you're probably at a crossroads uh, uh, from our last discussion. You were saying it's it's difficult, your time. But when you lose the satisfaction of even doing the hard work, that's when things will end. No, all- it's not just the satisfaction. See, this is not for me. It's not like I, this radio show is about waking people. The, the listeners that we do have, this is why I encourage people to get active. Because it's, we have got to put pressure. Call 350.org. Call these people and say, hey, I want to see your, uh, you know, why won't you disclose your donors to us? You're a private organization. Why shouldn't your donors be proud to tell you who they are? They have an 11 million. One of these people, uh, you know, what was it? Natural Resource Defense Fund. $11 million donation. And they are the people who are helping the state of Illinois keep open two decrepit nuclear power plants so that they can close their coal plants. Do you get what I'm saying? This is, this is the insanity of the world that we're living in, Tom. So I feel compelled. Like, there's no way I'm going to give up this time because people need to hear this. People do not even know about it. Well, my point, try, what, what I was trying to say to you, and, uh, I mean, you have your take on whatever it is that you're talking about. But I'm very different from most of the people you probably talk to because I'm more interested in Lonnie Clark, not just in terms of the, the facts and the information, but the, what you represent, that you have a determination, that you're, what, it's difficult, but the satisfaction is in representing something to people other than just the words you say, right? You're, you're being what you say you are. So it's like whatever it is you say, you become for me an honest person. This is what I've always said. I prefer honesty to truth because truth can be manipulated. And I think what we gather from other people, like when we have allies and we connect with people, it's not just what they say, it's what they represent. They're physically what they are. It's not like 
a word that they say that makes me excited or interested. It's like they represent themselves in their nature, in their essence, in their being. And when I say, you know, we have to step out of our comfort zone, and I, you, you know, when you, when you talk about with the people you bring on, and they're fabulous, I have to say the information that comes from all the people, and especially their dedication, I get inspired, like you say, Patty Amino, 27 years, 26 years? Yeah. Yeah, come on. That in itself. That well, in itself. Even the people just in St. Louis, their fight just started five years ago. These people have been living with it. I mean, we started thinking about Fukushima now six years ago. The people in St. Louis, that's when they found out, actually. Ironically, that was quite interesting, the way all this came about. I mean... I, 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 often, I thought about this one time. I wonder what would have happened about the Fukushima movement because a lot of those people that put together all that information in St. Louis, they're pretty, they're so smart. They, they connected the dots. They're like these scientific, they have several PhDs between the group of them that started that. They're not just some like stay-at-home moms the way the media presents them. You know what I mean? These are people of higher education. And they, I thought about this, it was around 2011 when they started connecting the dots about their situation. I wonder if Fukushima had anything to do with that. Because that's when Fukushima happened. I mean, we're living now with a nuclear monster, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's really bad in Fukushima. Gee, that's too bad about the Japanese children, isn't it? Isn't that, like, just so horrible they're going to make them go live there? Like, I, uh, I cannot understand how people can live next to a nuclear dump site that's burning or uh, probably is burning. The government refuses to tell them, but probably is. And, you know, just allow the people of Japan to just I, – I, we have our own soldiers in Japan. I mean, we have over 20,000, 30,000. Maybe I'm way underestimating it. You know what I mean? Like uh, Michael from Primer Time would probably have that number. His brother's in the service. How many people are in Japan? Probably a lot. A lot. I mean, these are. We have such a. We have such a journey right now. It is really up to us. And I, that's what I want this show to represent. Lonnie, I have to get this. It's a Okay, classic. Tom. Well, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Lonnie. Thank you. Hey, listeners, this is Lonnie Clark again without Thomas Ackerman. But uh, uh, let me just share with you some of my thoughts on what I want to do with the show as it moves forward. One of the things I want to do uh, is instead of talking about what's going on in St. Louis, I want to bring alternative ideas on how we can grow our own food, how you can make your own stuff that works great, homemade remedies and things like that, that I, hard and true remedies that I know work, that I've seen work in my life, because people have no idea how to live their lives without the pharmaceuticals, without buying it in a box, without buying it in a pan. Deodorant, for example, that's a perfect example. People don't know how to make their own deodorant. And the chemicals that you put on, that's what partly what causes all your illnesses. We don't need those chemicals. Arrowroot, baking soda, and coconut oil makes a great deodorant. So that's an example of the stuff that I'm going to be bringing. I do want to have interviews with people. Because I think that's super valuable for us to have interviews with people. We need to know the information. And I'm going to be digging more into that. Call in Fridays since I've had Dana on. Nobody calls in. But until Dana has his court appearance at least, I want to give him the opportunity to be on the air so that there's some public airing of the fact that he's not as they are portraying in the court, some lunatic and aggressive hostile person. He's not. You know, he's a concerned citizen, like I am, about the uranium mining, the nuclear mining, the lies, the nuclear liars. I mean, this Zika story, this is, I think the Zika story is exactly why, like, I just can't let go of it. This is how they lie. This is how they do it to you. This is what that guy said in that song, isn't it? That's how they do it. They just kind of slide it in there. And they don't even tell you about it. The Zika virus is not the Zika. It, it might be the Zika. And, you know, even Dr. Calicott said, oh, of course it does, Lonnie. It causes micro... It might. But the Zika virus probably is spreading the uranium. 
from the mines. It's not just, and it is the bad, it's not the mosquitoes, it's the bad uranium practices that are taking place in South America because we already know they have disgusting mines all throughout South America. That's one of the reasons that these uh, industrialists have been dying to get down there. Now, the, the project, if you look at the picture, it looks like some really great thing, but what happens when that uranium leaves the site? I mean, it is so outrageous. Downstream, if you were to look at this little town, it's called Coquette. I, I can't even say it. So it's in a in Cayetite. Cayetite. It's in a, a province called Cayetite. That's where they're taking 400,000 tons of uranium. 400,000 tons of uranium there. And, it, and they're you know, very excited. They think it's going to turn their country into, you know, a mining capital of the world, which it is. But at the same time, if you overlay the map and you take a look at where that place is in comparison, it's all upstream. All of the uh, areas that are grotesquely affected from the uranium mining. I'm not a scientist. I don't live there. Probably the IAEA would like want to do me in. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. 2016, I'm an American citizen scared of my own government. I don't know if that's how people felt in the past, but I know growing up, people weren't afraid of our government. I mean, when I was like 12, 13 years old, we used to go to sit-ins and marches. We stopped the... Uh, you know what stopped the Vietnam War is the, the soldiers just said, not doing it anymore, folks. And instead of being applauded for being heroes, for standing up to them, they were demeaned because people were so angry about the war. They looked at the soldiers and said, why did you do it? Why didn't you say no? Only now what happens is all the soldiers are under a gag order. So they can't even talk about it. They're under a gag order. That's what causes them to be suicidal. We're losing 21, 22 soldiers a day. That is outrageous. Rape is out of control. All of those are anger issues. You know, the, there's a great book called Secrets, and it talks about the world's secrets, things that we aggrandize, like things that we don't talk about, like we talk about the family structure, how great it is. You know, our family structure, the way we have it, is not so great. We don't have extended families. It causes extreme stress and anxiety. Parents go to work. I mean, we seriously have a harsh system in our culture. We've been sold this idea that America's like this great country. Let's make America great. How about that? <clears throat> Not let's make America great again. I mean, in my view, America is striving to be great. That's our goal. That's our, we, I mean, right now, America's striving to live in the freaking gutter. We've got a murderer and a unindicted election fraud felon. I mean, you know, it's, I don't know about you, but having the DNC members stepping down Gee, they get to step down. They perpetrate election fraud and they get to step down. It's not just the emails, folks. The media, and you know why they don't talk about it? Because if they talk about it, then they have to talk about George Bush's two stolen elections that the Democrats ignored. In my view, the Democrats have failed, 100% failed. They get an F out of me. You know what that means? Bye-bye. Dem exit. If Trump gets elected because half of us vote for Jill Stein, this country deserves these people. Just wait. That's the good thing. Once they bring the long arm of the law, we have too many guns in this country. Mike Pence and his little goons can't control everybody. Although they will torture a lot of people. We already have, you know, black people being shot daily, poor people being shot daily. It's, as Mimi German reminded me, it's not just black people, it's your economic status. If you're not if you're not willing to comply enough to screw everybody to the wall and make a lot of money, then your target practice. And that's how we are in this country. Wow. That sounds a bit cynical one year after I started this radio show. I came into this feeling like we could make a difference. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we are making a difference, but you know what? I know we have an obligation to continue it. There is just 
no way that we cannot. Uh, we have a responsibility to speak out. And, you know, even though the people, look, we look up in the skies and we see the geoengineering, all these marks in the sky, every picture has marks in the sky from geoengineering. Uranium mining, there, it's all over. They're dumping the tailings on Native American lands. I mean, what have we learned in the last year? We have learned that we are up Schitt's Creek, folks. Like, for real. <laughs> There's no easy way to put it. We have really literally turned a blind eye until they are beating us in the back and literally chopping off our feet. I mean, they, we have got to get active. And I, I don't know, like... I've had many people say that the election is just a big game, a scam. We've heard from Richard Mackinac. I've heard from other people laughing at me because I still believe in voting. I think we need to really vote. I think we really need to really get involved because we have a culture. It's just sort of run, being run by businesses. It's being run by the profiteers. I mean... I don't know how many of you have had to live on 10 bucks an hour, 11 bucks an hour. I have. I've had to work three jobs to support my two kids because guess what? And that phrase of deadbeat dads, like, really, do we even have to have that phrase? I, in the next year, I'm really going to expand a lot about the social culture. I do, I'm going to interview activists on Wednesdays. I'm going to keep the same format, at least on Wednesdays. I'm thinking about dropping on Monday. That's a shout out to Jules. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, and just using Friday for various ideas, uh, free for all, interviewing on Wednesdays and doing a bunch of different who knows what's going to happen on Friday. Because really, we have to have ideas on how to live and how to thrive. And we need to buoy each other up with positive thoughts while we're still listening to the information because one of us will get activated by one little tiny bit of something or another. This thing about the EPA in my own backyard has certainly gotten me going again. I am just dumbfounded. I mean, honestly. In 1997, the EPA knew that the Palos Verde shelf was toxic. I lived there and there was not one public announcement that went out through the schools or went out anywhere and told us we might be exposing our children to harm. I can imagine what the people of St. Louis or Flint think about. And the people of New York are just ignoring the fact that their water is full of tritium. Like, oh yeah, let's, if we all go to church or go to the mosque or, you know, go to temple, we're going to be protected somehow. No, we're not going to be protected, folks. The whales are washing up as we speak. Whales are big animals. You know? Let's, just, let's look up at the mass death today, just to, just to do it, since it's my one-year anniversary. <laughs> just to do it, just for kicks just to see what they're gonna tell us what was today's August 2nd so I guess nothing's been reported this is today I guess you put it up Wow massive die-off of marine life unprecedented along the Gulf Coast in Texas in America massive die-off fishes fish in the waters of Lakeport California tons of dead fish washed up in the lake of Da Nang Vietnam Wow that was just yesterday, people. Hundreds the day before July 31st, hundreds of dead fish found in lake. Never seen before like this. Oklahoma, America. Hundreds of dead fish found in the lake in South Dakota, America. Massive dias of fish in Indiana, America. 300 seabirds have washed up dead since May in Washington State in America. Wow, folks. So it's not happening to them. It's happening to us. And we continue to drink our coffee, go to our Starbucks, and pretend like all we need to do is think positively while we are ignoring the freaking elephant in the room. And if you try to make any effort to find out what's going on with Fukushima or, or what they're doing to stop the radiation in the ocean or anything, it is a tight-zipped lip. 
I cannot imagine that the people who are running this show are not doing something. It is just beyond comprehension. I mean, I get it that we're on a need-to-know basis, and we don't need to know. I get that part. And so they let us play our little political games. We get to talk politics. Oh, I never talk politics. Really, everything is politics. Who do you think makes the trade deals? Politicians. Who do you think sets the minimum wage, the maximum wage, the taxes, the tariffs, of which we have very few? It is outrageous. You know, I mean, I do not know how people can live with themselves. I, I know that I have had to stay active and think about it. And actually, to be honest, I don't know if this is going to affect my ability to go to the University of Oregon because I have protested outside of there. So I did want to talk about the election or the selection, as they say. And uh, I'm hoping that on Friday people will call in and talk about this because I'm sort of on the fence whether it matters or not. I mean, the only reason I want to vote for Jill Stein is just to poke him in the eye, to be honest. I know that Hillary Clinton's going to steal the election. She's, there's no way they're going to let Donald Trump even get near, near the White House, to be honest. I mean, the primary was a dry run for the Democrats. <laughs> That's really all it was. Is like, really? I mean, they were able to beat Bernie up, so now they're going to have to clearly steal it. So right now they're villainizing Donald Trump. I mean, I, all three networks, although he makes it easy. Could he have done any worse? Like, he picks Mike Pence, he picks on a soldier, he picks on the Muslims, and then yesterday he takes the guy's purple heart instead of giving it back. He, he's like, wow, I always wanted one of these. This is way easier. What a jerk. Really could, I mean, really, <laughs> somebody probably wrote that line for him. This morning on Fox News, I watched Karl Rove give him campaign advice. That was hilarious. I've started watching Fox News, folks, so I can see what they're saying. I mean, it is hilarious. And then also on C-SPAN, the so-called alternative, the public service, the one that's not at all uh, bias, Somebody calls up, starts talking about Hillary Clinton, and they cut the guy off right away, <laughs> the caller. So this is the crazy, crazy world we live in in America. It is not, it actually is easy in America. We still have running water. We still have electricity. I mean, most people in America, even the poor people in America, have access to services. Americans have no idea how comfortable they are. And how much we have built. Only we're living on borrowed time. Our infrastructures are about to collapse. I mean, we have ancient pipelines in this country. We have a Republican Party that's fiscally conservative. They're not going to do anything for America until we privatize it all. And then they're going to gouge us daylights out of us. I mean, it is a true banana republic. That's the definition of a banana republic. When the Democratic Party can get away with election fraud and not one indictment out of the Obama administration is an outrage. And he actually embraces the unindicted felon, gives her a big hug, and says, I want you to do for me what you did for her, what you did for me. Really? <laughs> huh? I'm not holding my nose and voting for her. I did that for you in the last election, not doing it now. So, no, that is not happening. Let's go to these mass animal deaths because this is really sad. Massive die-off of marine life, unprecedented, off the Gulf Coast of Texas, America. It's so sad. And yet Americans refuse to admit that these people have done it intentionally. Noah's Flower Garden Bank. Banks National Marine Sanctuary announced Monday that an unprecedented mass mortality is taking place at the East Flower Garden Bank. Wow. Wow. They have pictures of just dead everything. Everything is just overwhelmed by the outpouring. There's just dead everything. That is so outrageous. Off the Galveston coast.
Marine life suffers massive die-off of 100, 100 miles off the Galveston coast. Massive die-off, 100 miles off the Galveston coast. Wow. Noah's Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary announced Monday that it, so they had a National Marine Sanctuary. They decided they were going to create a marine sanctuary. And all around it, they've no doubt been allowing all this pollution. And, you know, BP that corrects it. Oh, my gosh. This is so sad. Hundreds of dead coral sponges, star brittle, sea urchins, mollusks. They're just killing all life on this planet, folks, without regard. Massive die-off of fish in the waters of Lakeport, California. Lakeport, California. Wow. That is so sad. Hundreds of dead fish never seen before in Oklahoma. I think that's called fracking, isn't it? Hmm. Warm lake conditions, low oxygen. <laughs> Don't you love this? There's never a thought about the uh, radiation that is coming down in the air, in the rain, in the wind, through the waters. The progress of decomposition requires oxygen, low oxygen, high in radiation, low oxygen, scattered fish. Can you imagine waking up to that? Well, folks, I am going to read more on my one year anniversary and I want to thank you for joining me but I'm going to read more from this uh, monster uh, from the uh, safety of nuclear power which was actually released 10-25-2006 and this was from Dr. Alvin M. Weinberg who told us repeatedly that nuclear power is safe in fact this is the safety of nuclear power it was a uh, it's part of that story that I was reading. It's his lecture that he gave before the Advancement of Science Writing Briefing at the New Horizons in, uh, in Science in Boulder, November 14th, 1972. This guy was giving this lecture, and I mean, I am not kidding you. I think I'll probably only have time for one paragraph. The response of the engineer to the knowledge that an uncooled reactor was a dangerous thing went in two directions. First, and the most obvious, was to build a stout, airtight, pressure containment vessel around every reactor, which is actually ridiculous. The second, perhaps less obvious, was to provide high-powered reactors with what are called actively active engineered safety features, various backup safety systems that would spring into action to make certain that in the event the main cooling system failed, there would be ample fire hoses available to prevent the reactor from melting. Why bother with the backup cooling system if the containment vessel in the final analysis will catch whatever radioactive debris might be created in an accident and then and thus prevent harm befalling the public? And indeed, this was the earliest at the attitude in the earliest days. The first containment vessel was a 225-foot diameter, diameter sphere around the sodium intermediate reactor in Schenectady. It was considered a last-ditch catch-all that in the event everything went wrong in the main system, the reactor would not create a public hazard. This is so outrageous that these people are sitting here still talking to themselves like this today. And in fact, we have a whole industry of people, of scientists, who think that the threat from nuclear harm is greatly overestimated. Chris Busby testifies in court about the veracity of scientific studies about the harm to human health. And he is doubted and argued against in court by other scientists who are paid by the nuclear industry. We have actual proof. You know, I have a protest sign that says, when scientists lie, people die. And that is exactly what we have in our entire culture. We have pharmaceutical industries. We have the food industry. We have the mega farming industry, part of the pharmaceutical industry, the military industry, the nuclear industry, which is the military industry. All of them, all their scientists are lying all across the board they're all told to lie this morning I read the story that up in Hanford a judge had to order safety gear 
had to make the DOE give safety gear to the workers at Hanford. A judge, a judge had to force the company to provide safety gear to its workers in Hanford. What kind of monsters run the industry of this nation? And what kind of people allow these people to continue to do this? There are no protests in the streets. We're not throwing the bums out. Nobody votes. The same bastards get voted in again and again and again. People on this network that speak out were considered conspiracy theorists and highly uneducated. I mean, I've been told, go to school and learn some science. I do know enough about science to understand that nuclear is the worst experiment that ever happened on this planet. Take a look at Chernobyl. Look at Three Mile Island. People from Chernobyl, while they may have lived, cannot reproduce, or they have children that have horrible problems. I don't know what it's going to take. You know, the Post Ignorance Project got started. When I, when I heard Kevin talk about that, I thought it was a great idea because that's where we're at. We are post-ignorant. Post-Fukushima, we are post-ignorant. If you are ignorant about Fukushima, that's your fault. That's your choice. You choose. You're choosing to stay with the batterer. That's why I can't stay with the DNC. Same reason I could never vote for the RNC. They're batterers. They are horrible. They do not love humanity and they do not love peace. They love war and they love power and control and money. And they will use all of that against us and make us their little servants. So no, I'm not ever, they're going to have to work hard for my vote, which they don't give a crap about because they'll just steal it. We live in a banana republic now, folks. The United Soviet States of America, that's our country. It's a Soviet state when you get to only vote for the right people. The right people. The ones that they want you to vote for. Hillary Clinton is, Trump is being demonized so that every Democrat will go, oh my God, I can't let Trump and Pence in. They're going to freak out. You know, they're going to, Pence is going to throw us all in jail because we're, country is pretty liberal. We've pretty much accepted gay people, you know, and these Bible thumpers who want to tell us we're all going to hell while he raped their children in private is bullshit. You know, like, no thanks. But that's not enough to make me vote for Clinton. I'm, that, that, that's an insult. And I have to say, it is a shock for me to reflect now and think to watch the DNC commit suicide to protect the bankers and to make the TPP go through. Because they're going, the TPP is going through whether Trump wins on a fluke or whether Clinton just decides to steal it or America is so scared of Trump that they vote her in by a landslide, which, you know, he's working pretty hard. I think Bubba's going to give him a multi-billion dollar. I mean... You know, the Clinton Foundation has billions. So Trump's a hard bargain. He's probably making Bubba pay him a billion bucks to help her get elected. On Friday, we're going to have Dana Durnford. I'm hoping Dana will be able to show up. His conversations are always really good. He talks about nuclear stuff too fast for me, but that's okay. I mean, for me, it's the details. I'm sort of a general person, as many of my listeners will know. The details are great facts, but it's not the facts that turn our hearts. It's the loves in our lives. It's the people that we love. It's our animals. It's our world. It's our the flowers. It's the garden. Whatever it is that makes your heart spark, that's what we need to fight for. I mean, there is a war going on, folks, and it's against our planet. And we're part of the planet. The ecocide is us. I mean, if we don't stop them, and I mean really stop them, I mean, the, the warring, this morning you wake up to news every day. I saw a video this morning of a 20, they were 22, 23-year-olds in Israel bullying a little 8-year-old girl, stopping her in the street, putting her bike on the ground, chasing her away, laughing about it, and throwing her bike in the bushes. 
Now, what kind of mentality is that? That's just bullies. And that's just the easy stuff they do. That's the sweet things they do. And all of that is paid with our tax dollars. All of it. All of it is paid with our tax dollars. If we ended the military budget, and I mean just enough to pay for our own soldiers, forget giving everybody else on this planet money and weapons. And we're not, it's not just about selling weapons. It's about selling war. It's about subjugating the populace, preventing people from controlling the population. This is so outrageous. We live in la-la land. The age of fission, folks, that's the new age, the age of fission. So we're at the collapse of the new, this old civilization and the onset of the new one. And as Jewel speaks about on her show regularly, their plan is to nanotech us and biotech us and so that those of us who were born in the 50s and 60s, we're gonna, we still think it's an outrage to have cloned people. So I, I, I didn't, I don't know. I wonder how many of you think that uh, Cheney's cloned by now. I do. Kissinger, isn't Kissinger supposed to be dead? I mean, for real, hasn't he done enough harm? I don't know. So here we are, one year into the Age of Fission radio show, and I'm rambling on about the election and the politics, like my usual thing, when in fact... You know, if you try to look, let's just Google it. Let's do it together. Let's Google Fukushima. And what will we get today? August 3rd, 2016. What do we get? Nothing. Oh, my gosh. We get a story from Fukushima Diary from 2014. That's what popped up first. <laughs> Any news. That's what popped up second. August 2016. Here we go. Let's see. I think this is the closest we get. August 3rd, 2016. That's the latest news that we get. That's it. Wow. And it's a story from the Telegraph. Abandoned inside Fukushima's nuclear disaster zone in pictures. So they're taking us there, but they're telling us nothing. We get nothing. We are on a need-to-know basis, and we don't need to know. The thing is killing tens of thousands of fish every year. Authorities investigating hundreds of dead fish at El Reno Lake. Really, our water supplies are dying, folks. We are radiating our planet polluting it at an unprecedented rate and our governments continue to deny 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 91 dolphins washed up found on the beaches in bulgaria oh my god why do we feel closer to the dolphins because the dolphins think like us they're mammals like us 70 dead whales washed up in the beach in southern chile it is time it is time for us to all assume our responsibility and get actively engaged. And whatever that means, like Tom talks about, you know, um, your character, about what you're doing. But I, I have no idea the time that other people have. And I still believe that it's important for us to contact our elected officials and poke them in the eye and not let them make these deals that sell our soul. The uranium mining, 400,000 tons of uranium mining in Brazil. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's an outrage. I mean, I'm stunned by that. I mean, that is just so outrageous. I mean, the uranium mining in Brazil is, they're doubling down on the uranium folks. Since 2000, state-owned nuclear industries in Brazil has been exploring uranium ore in Caetete, a municipality among the semi-arid region of Bahia, Brazil. The amount of uranium ore is estimated at 100,000 tons in the annual production of uranium concentrate, also known as yellow cake, is nearly 400 tons, not 400,000. So it's 400 tons of yellow cake that they are working to get out of the ground. What do we need yellow cake for? For weapons. 
Finally, the uranium oxide of uranium concentrate is packaged in drums and sent to Europe for conversion and enrichment. Enrichment. Wow. I do not know how anybody can even think about nuclear in our world post Fukushima. It is beyond, beyond me. People are dying in Japan, and we ignored it after World War II on a mass scale. We also ignored it. And now we have this coming week, right here in Eugene, we have the annual Hiroshima Nagasaki memorial that they're going to do out there on Alder Lake, Alton Baker Park here. They do not even talk about Fukushima. Don't even bring it up. It is not wanted. Don't talk about it. Their families are in Japan. Many of them live in Tokyo. They do not want to talk about the radiation that's in Tokyo at all. It's not even allowed to be discussed. They will walk away from you. They will shake their heads, say, yes, we know, and then say, oh, thank you, I have to go. They're very polite, just like the people in St. Louis, very polite. We have such a battered human species, folks, from all of this. We, I really think we need to gently bring people back to health through giving them information on how to have a healthy, happy life. So I'm hoping I'll be able to have more interviews with EFT tappers, people that understand alternative lifestyles, uh, how to grow your own gardens. There's gardeners here I want to interview that can teach us about microbes and things that I never even understood. Uh, how to remediate the soil, because there's ways that we can do that. How things that we can make our own things. And, get, you know, instead of uh, sending you to a website where you have to spend a lot of money and, you know, I mean, I, I personally can't handle the whole network marketing thing. I'm not going to get engaged in anything where I have to sign up to buy a product. I don't mind paying a little bit of a profit for a product. I, I don't mind that. But I don't want to get into, if I don't feel like buying it, I, someone else loses an income. That's what network marketing is about. So hopefully in the next year we're going to see the show grow. I am going to be changing it up. Um, I'm going to be taking off three weeks, like I said, at the end of this month. So far this month we have, um, next week I'm actually going to have someone that will rain on somebody's next week's people are going to uh, just give you a forewarning Carol Bohannon is running for president she's Weeping Willow too she's got a YouTube channel and I'm going to give her the show to talk about her platform which I don't agree at all with but uh, you know what she's running for president we might as well give her a voice since Clinton and Trump are doing it so I'm going to have her on next week and uh, then we'll have Mimi German and Donna Gilmore and then I will be off for three weeks and when I come back we'll have a little bit of a different format I'm not really clear what that is I'm going to work with Jules but I will focus on in the next year doing interviews from activists and getting the word about nuclear and not just nuclear I want to learn about chemical pollution I want to bring us ideas on how to remain healthy and happy and then I still like the free-for-all on Fridays. I, I like the idea that we can bring new ideas and have people call in and talk with us. So thank you for joining me in this last year, on my first year with the Age of Fission radio show. Put your courage feet on and take action. Start walking. Put your courage feet on and start walking. We need everybody to come up with their own ideas. Start taking action. Have some courage. I, I don't know about compliance as your friend. Have fun. Ciao.